Okay, so we're going to take a look at homework number four, problem number one. And if you look at this problem, it tells you specifically to design an XS3 to BCD code converter. Uh, and he also tells you to use an output code 0000 for all invalid input combinations. So, what does that mean? Well, it's actually not as complicated as it sounds. Um, BCD literally just means that we're taking a binary input and we're transiting it to some decimal value. We're taking some binary value and turning it to a decimal value. Um, now, what exactly, what's the context for this? Well, the way that I like to think of it <laughs> is, imagine that we need to send a message to someone, and you know, let's say we want to just ask for a cab, right? We can just say C-A-B. We can represent it with letters. Um, but let's say for whatever reason we don't want someone to know what we're saying, right? We're a Soviet spy or something. And if we just write out the word cab, people are gonna know pretty quickly what we're talking about. So we say, okay, instead of doing that, let's, let's encode this message. We're gonna say, okay, A equals one, B equals two, et cetera, et cetera, right? All the way to 26. And now, if I wanna write out the word cab, I can write it as 312. So cool, now somebody looking at this doesn't immediately know what we're talking about. But if your job is to sit there and crack codes all day, then that's a pretty easy one to crack. It's probably the first thing you're gonna check. So we say, okay, no, that's trash too. So instead what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna shift everything by three. We're gonna say that now A is three, B is four, five, six, seven, uh, I'm sorry, I just shifted this the wrong way. We're gonna shift it a different way. Now, uh, let's see, this is gonna be one, two, three, and then this is 26 and 25. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so we've just shifted this by three now. So now let's encode the message cab, right? It's gonna be one, 25, 26. Now you can see, right, if you're looking for the original scheme we had, now there's almost twice as many numbers. This, this is a lot harder of an encoding to figure out. And so we decide, okay, this is exactly how we wanna do it, right? We're gonna have this cipher, we're gonna assign values to all the letters, but we're gonna shift every value by three. But we don't wanna be doing that all day, right? If we have to translate a whole letter or something, then that's gonna be a very time-intensive process. So we wanna design a circuit that's gonna do it for us. And that's the XS3 to BCD code converter. <laughs> all it is, is you're taking some decimal value, right? Here we were doing letters to numbers to decimals. Here we're gonna do uh, binary to decimal. And we're just gonna shift it all over by three and then encode it. So what's that gonna look like? If we come over here to this nifty truth table I've already created. And my wire is not long enough, so we'll see how this works. <laughs> right, I've got your standard truth table here. Um, Kinda hard to see, but I've got A, B, C, and D. I've got an extra column for the index just so we can tell what value, what uh, row we're on in the truth table very quickly. And we need to decide, what is the output of this circuit gonna be? Well, if we were just doing a straight BCD converter, no excess or anything, <laughs> then we would want all of our encodings to be the same, right? If we were doing A equals one, then we would just go straight across like that, right? So a regular BCD converter would just be zero equals zero because we're not, we don't have an excess, we're not shifting anything. So uh, what we would do there is, you know, zero would be all zeros, one would be zero, 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 one, two would be zero, zero, one, zero, because, let me move this closer, because we're encoding this all in binary. But we decided we wanted this to be XS3, right? Well, so when we came over here and we did XS3, then the third position became our, our number one, right? So let me consult my notes here very fast. Yeah, so we're shifting by three, so three is gonna become our new start. So uh, let's think of it this way, and you'll see very quickly why this works. Where is, here's my color. So if we shift down three, three becomes our new zero. Right, this is an XS3 to BCD code converter. So instead of saying zero equals zero, now three equals zero. And now if we were to go encode some message with the number three, then zero would pop up. And somebody who's looking for this encoding wouldn't exactly know what's going on. Right, so if we're trying to encode, um, if we, you know, the value, uh, we'll do this, three, two, one, right? Well, three is our new zero, so it's gonna become zero, 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 zero. 
Okay? And then um, we'll see why, actually, in this circuit. I'm not going to do that. It's a terrible example because we're also told that we need to use the code 0000, 000, 000 for all invalid input options. Well, <laughs> we need to represent, we're going binary to decimal, and we have 10 values in the decimal system. So that means that we need 10 values. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Any numbers outside of 3 to 12 just don't enter in this, in this circuit because we're doing XS3. Right? So we said between 3 and 12, well, that means that 13, 14, 15, 0, 1, 2 are all invalid. And he said use all zeros for invalid codes. Right? So then 13, 14, 15, 0, 0, 0, 0. So we've just set up all of the in oh, did I get 12 in there as well? I did. Oopsies. OK. So now we've set up what our valid range is, 3 to 12, because this is XS3. And now remember, in decimal, our digits range from 0 to 9. right? But we're going XS3, so we add 3 to all of that. So we're going from 0 plus 3, 3, to 9 plus 3, 12. So 3 to 12. And we're just encoding from there, right? 3 became our new 0. So that means that 4 is our new 1. And how do we represent 1 in binary? Well, it's 0, 0, 0, 1. And that means that 5 is our new 2, which means that it's going to be 0, 0, 1, 0. Right? And that means that 12 is our new, uh, what is it, 10. Right? Is that right? That should be right. One second. Yes. So what is this? Um, 0, 0, 1, 1. If we just go down the line here, 0, 1, 0, 0, and you can continue from there, right? And you're just going to keep incrementing by 1 because that's all we're doing. We're literally just making a counter. And so once you've filled up this truth table, I'll leave the last little bit for you. I've done all the hard parts for you. Um, I think you can figure out from there. Um, you've got your inputs, A, B, C, and D. You know the value that all of those uh, inputs and you know, each of these indices uh, correspond to. And we have our outputs, w, x, y, and z. Well, whenever we're doing logic design, we're always optimizing outputs for optimizing functions. And w, x, y, and z are four independent functions. So in order to fully design this whole thing, we need to k-map this, which I'll also leave as an exercise for you guys, because you should be on it with k-maps by now. Uh, but once you have all of the values for w, x, y, and z, all you need to do is k-map it, finish designing your circuit. Um, like I said, come to my office hours tomorrow. And we'll go over all of this more fully, but that is the basic gist of uh, XS3 to BCD code converter.